Welcome to the Assembly Podcast. So glad that you have chosen to be with us once again, and always good to be with you for a discussion of things that pertain to Jesus Christ. Uh, you are special to us, and we appreciate your time and the fact that you join us here whenever you have the opportunity. Now, we're thinking about the birth of Jesus, most of us, uh, during this time, uh, probably, and it is a wonderful thought to think of how God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, gave his son to come into this world and to be a human being. The God of eternity entered into human history. That is the message of the birth of Christ. And it is a wonderful message. It's the greatest message ever heard. And no wonder the gospel is called the good news because we were in sin. We were in bondage to sin. We had no hope. We had no help until Jesus came and set us free. And he did that through his perfect life, through his triumphant resurrection from the grave, and especially through his sacrificial death on the cross for our sin. Remember Isaiah said hundreds of years before it happened that the Savior would be born. Isaiah chapter 9, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. Jesus is God, he is the Son of God, and he is a human being. And the Son of God became flesh. The Son of God became a person. God the Son. Remember that in John chapter 1. Don't ever forget that. The Word was with God in the beginning, and all things were made by Him, and nothing was made without Him. And John chapter 1 tells us the Word that was with God and the Word that was God was made flesh and dwelt among us in verse 14. He became human, and that is the birth of Jesus. That is the birth of Jesus into the world, the entrance of the Son of God into the world to do for us what we could never do for ourselves. So unto us a child is born, a human child, where God becomes a human being. Unto us a son is given. So he's not only a child born, he is a son given. So there is the uniqueness of Jesus Christ. He's born as a child, but he is given as the Son of God. And the Son of God is the Savior of the world. So it's an amazing story. And it's a story about the love of God and how God became human in order to save us. And the most important part of the story is that Jesus is God in the flesh coming into the world to save sinners, to do for us that which needed to be done in order for us to be saved. And that's what he did. He saved our soul. And so the mystery of godliness, according to 1 Timothy chapter 3, is great. It's a great mystery how this happened. And we will never fully understand the incarnation. We will never understand how God became man. But we are appreciative of it, and we need to appreciate and grow in our appreciation of it, for it tells us that we can be saved. Jesus was fully human. In Galatians 4 and verse 4, Paul said, that when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son. So there it is. Unto us a son is given, Isaiah said. Well, Paul says in Galatians 4, God sent forth his son when it was time. And it was predicted centuries before it happened. But when it was time, it happened. When God makes a promise and God makes a prophecy, it is as certain as if it had already been fulfilled. And Jesus was born in Bethlehem's manger because God determined that it would be so. God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, fully human, born of a woman, fully Jewish, born under the law. And that's important because he came into this world to keep God's law for us. And the law of God was given by Moses. And the law of God was given to the nation of Israel. And so in order to save us, one of the things Jesus had to be was Jewish. And of course, he had to be a descendant of David in order to reign on David's throne. A lot of things had to be fulfilled, and they were all fulfilled in Jesus. But he became a human being, fully human, to keep God's law, born of a woman, born under the law, which means he always kept God's law to perfection. Now, you and I have not done that. We have not kept God's law to perfection. We have broken God's laws. We have tremendously broken God's laws. We have repeatedly broken God's laws. 
So Jesus came to set that right. Jesus came to keep God's laws for us in a human body as a human being, because that's what God has always wanted, is for someone to obey him in a human body as a human being. And that is exactly what Jesus gave him. Jesus gave him a person, a human, who was obedient, a person who put God first, a person who served God and was obedient to God in every sense of the word. Absolutely perfect. Now, how he pulled that off, we may never understand, but we're thankful that he did because his perfection counts for us. He came into the world and obeyed God perfectly. We get the credit for that. How do we get the credit for that? By trusting in him. Romans chapter four says that God imputes or gives or reckons the righteousness of Jesus to us if we put our trust in Jesus. If we trust in this man who was born in Bethlehem's manger, this man who grew up and lived a perfect life, this man who obeyed God in every sense of the word, if we trust in him and what he did in his perfect living and his perfect dying, in his sacrificial death, we trust in his resurrection from the grave. We believe that what he did counts for us and we believe that that is what is going to get us to heaven then we get the credit for what he did. We get the righteousness that he achieved. And I don't have any righteousness of my own to claim, nor does anyone else, because Romans chapter 3 says, there is none righteous, no, not one. The only exception to that is Jesus. He was absolutely perfect and righteous and holy. And he made us that way. Because we trust in him, we get credit for his obedience. Romans 5 19 says, by the obedience of one man, many will be made righteous. Just as by the disobedience of one, talking about Adam, many were made sinners. We are in the same boat Adam was. We are sinners, but we receive the righteousness of Jesus by trusting in his obedience. That would sound way too good to be true if it were not, well, true. If God had not sent his son in order to do this, to actually save us from our sins, so the good news of Jesus today and the good news of Christmas, if you will, is that God became human and God came into this world. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, given to us because we needed to be saved. God so loved the world that he gave, gave his only begotten son. So unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. He is a mighty God who came into this world. That was God in human flesh. It was the Son of God given by God the Father, and the Son of God is God too. And we recognize that from several statements that Jesus made. In the Gospel of John, they wanted to kill him because he called himself the Son of God, making himself equal with God. They knew what he was claiming. They knew what that meant, and they knew that he was claiming to be God. And he told them in John chapter 8, before Abraham was, I am, when they asked who he made himself out to be. And that was a claim of deity. So he is the mighty God, and he claimed to be God, and he proved that he was God. Because Romans 1 and verse 4 says he was declared to be the Son of God with power by his resurrection from the dead. God raised him from the dead and proved that he was and is the Son of God. And the Son of God is God the Son. And so he comes into the world to save us. He comes into the world to redeem us. He comes into the world to make us perfect. And who does that? The mighty God, the wonderful counselor, the one that you can talk to, take your problems to, the one that you can lean on, the one that you can depend on to save you. He will give your life direction. He will give your life all that it needs to be successful and to be what God intends for it to be. You get all of that through Jesus. Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father. What does that mean? That doesn't mean he's God the Father. That means he is the head of his own special people. He is the head of the Christian race, the Christian kingdom, all who are believers, Jews and Gentiles, in the one body. He is our leader. He is our commander. And we follow him, and he makes us into what we need to be. And with his leadership, we become the people of God. So he leads us out of darkness, like Moses led the people of Israel out of their bondage to Egypt and led them to the promised land, or at least to where they could go into the promised land. Jesus leads us out of our bondage to sin and self and Satan and leads us to the glories of the promised land of salvation and eventually into heaven. This was a rescue mission, a salvation mission that he came into the world to pursue. 
and he achieved it and he achieved it on our behalf. And so the message of the birth of Jesus is a message of victory and a message of assurance and a message of salvation. It says on the one hand, we don't deserve it. It says on the one hand, don't be surprised when you mess up and mess up a lot. Don't be surprised when you do terrible things, when you have done terrible things because you are a sinner in need of a savior. But also that tells us that God knew we were going to need a savior and he sent that savior into the world in order to bring us to salvation. That Jesus came into the world to save sinners, to be what the Bible calls the friend of sinners and to accomplish their salvation. And his salvation that he accomplishes is an absolutely free gift. He did not come to make salvation difficult. He came to make it a reality for his people. You remember Matthew 1 and verse 18 says, Now the birth of Jesus was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, and before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, a good man, not wanting to make her a public example, was of a mind to put her away privately. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit put this baby in her womb, and she has not done anything wrong. And in Matthew 121, the angel says to Joseph, you will call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. The name Jesus means Savior, and that's the reason he was given that name is because he would come and be a savior to people and he would save his people from their sins. And anyone who wants to be one of his people can be one of his people. By naming the name of Christ and putting your trust in him, looking away from sins and repenting of what you've done and looking to Jesus. All it takes is, and I'm sorry, Lord, and I'm not gonna do that anymore. I'm gonna try to live better. And the moment you say that, no matter what you've done, the moment you say that you are forgiven and you have salvation, so turn to the Lord and live your life for him and give him your heart and give him your life, a life of faith, a life of trust, and a life of obedience. And live your life for him because he is the savior of the world, the son who was given and the child who was born. So when God gave his son, he gave everything he could possibly give. And now with him, he gives us everything that we need to live the Christian life. Romans chapter eight, Paul said, he who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up freely for us all, how will he not also with him give us all things that we need? Give us all things that we need to live the Christian life. So the message of the birth of Jesus is not only that God cares about saving you, but that God cares about securing you and seeing you successful. God cares about helping you, and God will help you through life. If he gave his son to die for you, in other words, he will give you whatever you need to live for him and to be victorious in him. And that's the promise of the gospel, the promise of the presence of God and the power of God and the I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me of Philippians 4.13. God is with us. God is always with us. And how do we know that? Because Jesus came into the world, came into the world to save us. Later on in Matthew chapter 1, the Bible says that all this was done that it might be fulfilled what was spoken by the prophet, that the virgin shall conceive and bear a son. They will call his name Emmanuel which is God with us. The message of the birth of Jesus is that God is with us. God is with us through it all. God is with us on our side. And God is with us in the person of Jesus Christ. And he will never leave us and he will never forsake us because he is the friend of sinners. And he is the friend who sticks closer than a brother. He is the friend who never leaves. And he is the friend who will see you through. So remember to give glory to God. And remember to believe in the nearness of Jesus and the love of Jesus and the sacrifice of Jesus. And to remember what it means in Isaiah 9 and verse 6. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. That's the message of the birth of Christ. We thank you for your time. It's always a pleasure to be with you. We appreciate you so much. And we look forward to seeing you next time and hope that you have a very Merry Christmas.